phylum Nidaria, members of the phylum Nidaria. Many things are polyp and medusa completed. Okay. I told you about the tooth. Okay. Did I tell you about the tooth? <laughs> the rule of two. Second phylum of the animal kingdom. Two forms are there, polyp and medusa. And polyp and medusa, it's like some animals are polyp and some animals are medusa. Now, this we have to learn that examples of common polyps and examples of common medusa. Okay. So, what is the shape of a medusa? Medusa is what shape? Umbrella shape. Good. Medusa is umbrella. So let me uh, tell you something about polyp and medusa, the two forms. Minimum thing that you are supposed to know, polyp and medusa. So polyp, I call them as pole-like medusa and medusa is umbrella-like. So overall the shape is different. Now this is cylindrical, cylindrical like a pole, pole-like. So I have made this pole-like polyp, pole-like polyp because it is erect and non-motile. And this is umbrella-shaped, umbrella-shaped. So far you are with me? Good. <clears throat> what other points that you know about polyp and medusa? Polyp is sessile. Sessile means it is non-motile and medusa is motile. In fact, it is free swimming. Free swimming. Okay. After that, polyp reproduce asexually. So it reproduce asexually. Medusa reproduces sexually. So polyp is asexual, just remember, the one which is pole-like, the one which is fixed, it is asexual, it reproduces asexually, it reproduces asexually. But both are diploid forms, there should not be any confusion that one is haploid, one is diploid. Now both are diploid forms, please understand that, polyp and medusa, sessile free swimming, Sessile means fixed to the bottom. Just remember these differences. Now, coming to the examples of polyp and medusa. Now, examples here. Hydra. Hydra and Adamsia. 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 Adamsia and a sea anemone. Adamsia means sea anemone. Adamsia ante sea anemone. Hydra. <clears throat> These are the examples. Examples in Medusa form. Examples. Physalia. Physalia. Aurelia. Aurelia. Aurelia is jellyfish. In fact, moon jellyfish. Aurelia is moon jellyfish. Physalia is Portuguese. Man of war. Man of war. 
Portuguese man of war. You have to learn these names. Faithalia is Portuguese man of war. Faithalia, Portuguese man of war. Aurelia, jellyfish. Aurelia, jellyfish. Edemcia, sea anemone. Edemcia, sea anemone. Hydra, Hydra is Hydra. Just a point about Hydra. Hydra is fresh water. Hydra lives in fresh water. It, it lives in pond and lakes. Hydra is fresh water. And this itself is a question. Dear children, I have, this is completed. Jellyfish. Sir, Obelia comes under. Now, Obelia is showing metagenesis. So, Obelia comes under both. Obelia is a very special case. Now, what happens that generally, uh, in case of the Nidarians, if there is a Medusa, it will reproduce into more Medusa. It will reproduce more Medusa, okay? It will give birth to Medusa, okay? Similarly, if it is a polyp, it will give birth to polyp. If it is a polyp, it will give birth to more polyp. So, more and more babies are born, as you can see. Reproduction is happening, okay? This. But there are some cases where rather than reproducing into, like Medusa, Reproducing into Medusa, no, but Medusa here give rise to polyp. So Medusa, rather than giving birth to Medusa, no, it gives birth to polyp. And this polyp, rather than giving birth to Medusa, it, uh, you know, rather than giving birth to polyp, it gives birth to Medusa. So this alternation of generation keeps on happening. This alternation of generation keeps on happening, okay? So, if there is a Medusa-like form, an umbrella-like form, okay? And it will reproduce into a polyp. It will give birth to a polyp, okay? Now, this phenomenon is known as alternation of generation or metagenesis. What is the name? Metagenesis. Learn the name Metagenesis. It has to be learned Metagenesis. Metagenesis. Okay. Metagenesis. When a polyp gives birth to Medusa and Medusa gives birth to polyp. Now, this is not a common thing. It is found in some, this is seen in some animals. Example, Obelia. Example, Obelia. Obelia is the example. Showing metagenesis. So, Obelia neither comes under 100% polyp and nor it is a 100% medusa. There is alternation of generation. And my dear children, this question gonna come. This question is an important question. I call it a three-star question. Please note down. This is an important question. Metagenesis seen in Obelia. Obelia is also known as Cifer. It is also known as Cifer. Well, these informations one should know. And Nidaria, I think Nidaria, only examples are left in Nidaria. Some of the common examples already we have done. Some pictures we need to see, some pictures. The paper will be from NCRT and whatever I have spoken, maybe one or two questions may come, for example, which are very easy, but okay, they are not given in NCRT. One or two. If it is more than two, you can say, sir, you can, you have to give us uh, full marks. Everyone will get bonus marks. It is not more than one or, I mean, two. The limit is two, where you cannot show that in NCRT. Remaining all will be seen in the NCRT, but at the same time, not every question is that easy. So my dear children, here we come to examples of the Nidarians, examples. So we have got Physalia, which is Portuguese man of war. What is a Portuguese man of war? Portuguese man of war. Okay, it is Physalia, but what exactly is Portuguese man of war? It is a battleship. Very good. It is not a man. It is a battleship. Ademcia, sea anemone. Ademcia, sea anemone. 
पेनेट्यूला सी पैन नाउ दिस इज इजी पेनेट्यूला सी पैन पेनेट्यूला सी पैन अ गॉर्जियस लेडी विद अ फैन अ गॉर्जियस लेडी विद अ फैन यू नो गॉर्जियस लेडीज इन ब्रिटिश ब्रिटिश लेडीज दे आर हैविंग अ फैन इन द ओल्ड मूवीज ओके सो रोमन थिंग Gorgonia, Gorgonia, gorgeous lady with a fan, sea fan. Gorgonia, sea fan. Gorgonia, sea fan. Sea fan, Gorgonia. Mildrina, Mildrina. So the meaning of anything when you are reading, the meaning of anything that comes through the brain. Okay. Suppose if I ask you, what does this mean? What does this mean? You will think in the brain, and then you will tell. Tell this means this. If I ask you what is Medusa, what does Medusa, you know, what does Medusa mean? You will think in the brain, and then you will answer. So mean, mean, meandrina, meandrina is brain coral. Meandrina is brain coral. Penetula, sea pen, and uh, gorgonia. Gorgonia, sea fan. Gorgonia, sea fan, and Obelia. Who will tell me the answer? Obelia. Obelia. Chalo. Sea fur. Very good. I got the answer. Tooth. Very good. Obelia. Sea fur. Very good. Very good. At least you guys are have that uh, uh, that concentration which actually required. Only that much is required. even if you can give that much of concentration then the journey is not difficult it is not at all difficult every year thousands of people are entering into medical colleges <clears throat> nearly 40000 plus people are entering into medical colleges every year so it is not at and if we add some foreign medical college the number can go to 60000 it is not at all difficult okay just some intent should be there in the heart intent what for we are sitting we are sitting so that we can prepare a topic and then that will be tested tomorrow that will be tested tomorrow it's a jam approach i call it gem jam so the first g is for goal the goal we know the goal is in this weekend test a portion of the syllabus will come and i will crack it the way i am thinking about the neat examination i will crack it after that efforts okay so once you have the intent and now you are giving your efforts whatever is your intent depending upon that you are giving your efforts and then that test okay uh, so gem m for measurement m for measurement so whether your efforts are really going in the right direction that is measurement m and that work is done by our system okay or any system where you are you are regularly being drilled and tests are given mock tests mock test means mock means simulated same type okay same type now we are giving 50 questions we are giving you internal choice in biology in every subject okay so we are giving you mock test and every mock test you are getting to know and you know one more thing please please do one thing my dear children i would be so happy if at least 50% of you learn this thing after the test do not leave the paper just like that after the test the importance of the paper is still there in fact till your neat examination the paper has importance okay now what the what you have to do with the paper in the paper you take a red pen and chinna chinna you have to journal you have to write your journal it's a journal for example and mainly for the errors suppose if i have uh, committed an error thinking that what is the uh, fertilization in case of uh, you know porifera in porifera there is internal fertilization okay and i somehow made a mistake suppose so in that paper i will write porifera internal fertilization okay in the question root i will make it a circle so all these things will give a feedback to your brain that okay you commit error in every paper suppose you commit 10 errors hmm? 
so never mind you you we have around 100 papers so you can multiply how many errors these are not simply errors these are your pledge that this question you are not going to do the mistake in this particular question you are getting immunity the vaccine against error every error is a vaccine against error but how you have to convert that into vaccine and for that you have to journal now i used to earlier told that you have to maintain a separate notebook for your error report no in the same paper you can write your report you need not to write so many things it is only for you right it is giving you feedback no one else is going to read it so if shortcuts short forms are acceptable to you it is wonderful because it is only meant for you it is not meant for anyone else but every paper there should be some work in the paper that should be there that shows the intent okay dear children i hope meaning mean rina and with that we come to the end of the nidarians in nidarians uh, some more points which are mentioned here about the corals i told you that coral c for corals c for colonial and they are important because they have got a you know shell they have got not a shell except exoskeleton of calcium carbonate another c calcium carbonate exoskeleton hmm? and uh, uh, this in hindi we call them munga and in telugu we call them pagadam and uh, some of these corals the skeleton is being polished and even it is used as show pieces and mostly used in uh, jewelry and as a semi precious stone okay people also wear it the red coral is supposed to be very holy the mouth lies on a small projection which is known as hypostome so there is a cylindrical thing and in the center of the cylindrical thing there is a opening which is the mouth okay and then those nidarian which exist in both form exhibit alternation of generation or metagenesis well that is all about nidarians dear children tinofora a very small phylum tinofora it is going there so all the section and one section only one section lt2 sir lt2 lt2 yeah those who want they can sit in lt2 only if lt1 wants they can sit in lt2 not a problem now dear children these are commonly known as sea walnuts or comb jellies they are commonly called sea walnuts or comb jellies so they are jelly like and they have got a comb now comb you understand a comb which we used to dress our hair we used to dress our hair with the help of this comb right so in this comb they have got this type of comb these are like comb and what these bristles are these bristles are nothing but these are cilia these are cilia so they have got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 total enmity 8 8 comb plates it is a characteristic of tinofora 8 comb plates tino 8 comb plates characteristic of tinofora okay comb plates characteristic and that to number 8 these are tentacles these are tentacles tentacles okay what is one thing which is present in nidaria but absent in tinofora which is present in nidaria but absent in tinofora who will tell me what is that thing which yes they help in locomotion nidocytes yes yes priyanka you are absolutely right to say nidocytes or nidoblast or stinging cells now this phylum does not possess stinging cells so they do not have the nido uh, you know the nidoblast or the nematocytes and all that is not there in this phylum okay and uh, but in what is present in tinofora which is absent in nidaria 
what is present in tenophora absent in nidaria come on very good very good bioluminescence very good biolum see bioluminescence is also present in nidaria but it is in one or two like moon jellyfish it is having but characteristic like most of them very firm bioluminescence can be seen that is in phylum tenophora so there out of 51 percent and here one out of 10 so obviously we can say bioluminescence is very common in tenophora so yes any other thing which is yes complex gayatri you are absolutely right in saying complex which are present in uh, tenophora but they are absent in nidaria however what is common between tenophora and nidaria common between tenophora and nidaria come on number one yes think of common between tenophora and nidaria symmetry very good i take symmetry perfect next thing next tissue grade of or yeah, very good tissue grade of organization very good i take that very good yes both are hermaphrodite and both are diploblastic wonderful they both are diploblastic and they have got both intracellular as well as extracellular yes deepika you are right very good both digestion are present and they are diploblastic yes janvi you are right very good digestion is also both extracellular and intracellular yes so symmetry is common tissue grade of organization diploblastic organization these things are common between nidaria and tenophora okay bioluminescence is well marked they are saying well marked in tenophores sexes are not separate reproduction takes place only yes one thing in tenophora only sexual mode of reproduction wherein in case of nidaria both sexual as well as asexual and you know that one form polyp is always asexual and medusa is sexual but in tenophora exclusively sexual one more thing one more feature in tenophora which is exclusive and that is what is that can you think of exclusive very good gayatri you are right they are marine priyanka you are right very good okay your number 1763 correct 2934 yes you are right say that hmm? they are exclusively marine in case of tenophora we have not discovered any freshwater form exclusively marine very good and they they reproduce by sexual mode exclusively hmm? and they don't have the nidoblast and and yes sexes are only separate separate sexes is first time seen in ascalminthes so up to the escalminthes, I mean up to the platyhalminthes, all these phyla, sexes are not separate. They are present in the same body, monoecious. Organisms are monoecious, animals are monoecious. So they have got complates, they have got bioluminescence, they have radial symmetry, exclusively marine, they are diploblastic organization and tissue grade of organization. The body bears eight external rows. How many? Eight external rows of ciliated complates which help in locomotion. And digestion is both intra as well as extra. First extra and then intra. Bioluminescence, which is the property of a living organism to emit light, is well marked in tenophores. Sexes are not separate. Reproduction takes place only by sexual means and fertilization is external. Fertilization is external with indirect development. The basic life forms, there is indirect development. Dear children, hope that makes sense. Okay, now. We have seen internal fertilization in porifera. Hmm? We have seen external fertilization in nidaria and tenophora. Once again, internal in porifera. After that, there are two which are showing external. 
external fertilization now this this phylum again comes showing internal fertilization please re remember both the peas okay porifera and platyhelminthes they have got internal fertilization dear children they are dorsoventrally flattened hence are called flat worms they are mostly endoparasites yes they are mostly endoparasites inside the body of animals endoparasites and uh, they are mainly in the animals including the human beings okay flat worms are bilaterally symmetrical the first phylum to show bilateral symmetry as we all know is flat worms triploblastic the first phylum to show triploblastic nature is platyhelminthes and they are acelomate animals with organ level of organization with organ in platyhelminthes organ level organ level of organization hooks and suckers now these hooks and suckers they are parasitic adaptations some of them absorb nutrients from the host directly through their body surface now think of what is the function of digestive system digestive system converts complex food into simple food complex food into simple food right with the help of enzymes why we want to make them simple so that we can absorb them those can be absorbed in the monomeric form fine now they are only taking the nutrients the digested nutrients from other organisms so as such they don't require digestion in their body exclusive digestion not required slowly and slowly their digestive system is start degenerating in fact tapeworms it is not found in tapeworms altogether elementary canal is absent in tapeworms all the tapeworms dog tapeworm beef tapeworm pork tapeworm all the tapeworms elementary canal is absent it is one of the parasitic adaptation elementary canal is absent okay done specialized cells called flame cells help in osmoregulation and excretion but at this question to i think 101% this flame cell question is going to come flame cell is also representing proto nephridia so we can also call it proto nephridia proto means first okay and nephridia these are tubular structures tubular structures which help in excretion which help in excretion sexes are not separate fertilization is internal and development is through many larval stage fertilization is internal internal and development through multiple many multiple larval stage they have polyembryony 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 they have got polyembryony more than one larval stage more than one larval stage and therefore uh, they require more than one intermediate host more than one intermediate host and this is a uh, a parasitic adaptation this is a parasitic adaptation more than one intermediate host is a parasitic adaptation now you just tell me the answer in which chapter of ncrt you will find this line saying that they have more than one intermediate host to facilitate parasitization of the primary host to facilitate parasitization of the primary host more than one intermediate host to facilitate parasitization of the primary host human health and disease and not organism and population <laughs> organism and population what about that parasitism organism and population not there <clears throat> human health and disease well 99% people are answering human health and disease organism and population the species interactions parasitism in parasitism it is not there more than one intermediate host to facilitate parasitization now this is seen in liver fluke very clearly we can see this in liver fluke okay 
Now, dear children, some examples of the uh, platyhelminths are tinea or tapeworm, fasciola or liver fluke. Tinea or tapeworm, fasciola or liver fluke. But uh, what type of body form or body plan is this? Is it a cell aggregate body plan? Is it a blind sac body plan? Or it is a tube within a tube body plan? In case of platyhelminths, what type of body plan you find? It is a blind sac body plan. And only one opening for both ingestion and ejection. They don't have a separate mouth and anus. That means one opening is doing the work. So it is the body plan is a blind sac. The body plan is a blind sac. A blind sac body plan. Okay. So this opening is for both ingestion as well as ejection. Blind means which is closed at the other end. Because it is closed, it is called blind. Blind sac. It is a sac like blind sac body plan in case of platyhelminths. Examples, tinea, tapeworm, fasciola, liver flu. Examples of tenophora, pleurobrachia and tenoplana. Pleurobrachia and tenoplana. Pleurobrachia and tenoplana. And my dear children, I'll now take you to an important page, an important place here where you will learn a trick to remember the internal fertilization in case of the non-chordates. After that, when chordate will begin, I'll tell you the trick of chordates. Internal fertilization in case of non-chordates. So in porifera, you can see internal fertilization. Then platyhelminths and ethelminths, you will see internal fertilization. And then you will find internal in case of arthropoda. In arthropoda also, internal fertilization. So four phyla showing internal fertilization in case of non-chordates. Four phyla showing internal fertilization in non-chordates. And they, uh, they can be remembered as papa. Papa, okay. This is internal in non-chordates. This one is porifera. Porifera. This is, is platyhelminths. Platyhelminths. This one is eschelminths. In both the helminths, internal fertilization. In both the helminths, internal fertilization. And then it is arthropoda. Arthropoda. Exclusive internal exclusive internal fertilization is in these four phylum PPAA papa papa PPAA so P for porifera another P for platyhelminths another A for eschelminths and the last A for arthropoda another trick is both the helminths they have internal fertilization both the helminths have internal fertilization whether did you notice or not that all diploblastic animals have radial symmetry and are acylomates. All diploblastic animals have radial symmetry and are acylomates. And they no coelom. So we can say that all these phyla, they don't have a coelom. Well, this I just wanted to rebrush in your mind. And uh, well, now you prepare for your test. You prepare this and take a target. This time, your target should be 180 on 180 in geology. The target is 180 on 180 in geology, okay? So, this is a promise to yourself, to me, and then we will proceed. Okay, guys? Well, that's all about this class. God bless you. And I'm now signing off. Audio not coming. Sorry, but audio not coming. What happened? Unmute. What happened? Sorry, sorry. Let's check it. We know some problem happening. Volume problem.
We are saying unmute. See. I can't say this now. Okay, sorry guys, I didn't see that. So the last thing that you heard, tell me. Please confirm from when you did not hear. Papa, you heard. Okay, so what is Papa, Porifera, then Platyhelminth, Ascalminth, and Arthropoda. Arthropoda, Ascalminth, Platyhelminth, Porifera. These are the four phylum where there is internal fertilization among the non-chordates among the non-chordates and also i said all diploblastic organisms they have got radial symmetry they have radial symmetry Achha, you know about the primary radial primary symmetry secondary symmetry primary symmetry is the symmetry of the larva and secondary symmetry is the symmetry of the adult primary symmetry is the symmetry of larva and secondary symmetry is the symmetry of adult now for example in echinodermata primary symmetry is bilateral but secondary symmetry is radial you know they have got pentamerous radial like starfish all these you have radial pentamerous radial symmetry but primary symmetry the larval symmetry is bilateral. In the same way, the primary symmetry in gastropoda, mollusca, is bilateral. But in the adult, due to twisting or torsion, they become asymmetric. So please understand, if a question comes, which of them have uh, primary radial symmetry? The symmetry is, or primarily, they have radial symmetry. In that case, you cannot answer echinodermata. Echinodermata has secondary symmetry, which is radial. So primary radial symmetry, then you will answer Nidaria and Tenophora. Nidaria and Tenophora. Okay, very good. So I hope, I am very hopeful that you will be able to uh, answer all the questions correctly. And as I promised you, maximum, maximum a question can come which is you will not find in the NCRT is one, um, two, maximum limit is two. Please, and those questions also, some or the other time, I have written on board and explained it thoroughly. Well, I'm now signing off. That is all I wanted to discuss with you. And now please prepare for the test. All the best, children. Ask some questions, okay? I thought of, but I thought that you must be having uh, less time. Okay, so some questions. Let us solve some <clears throat> questions here. And uh, long term. One assignment we have given you. This assignment we have given you. Did you get this assignment? This one, cells are arranged as loose aggregation in phylum porifera and some division of labor activities occur among the cells. In dash and dash, these cells combine to form tissues known as uh, tissue level of organization. Okay, so in dash and dash, their cells combine to form tissues. In which phylum? Nidaria and Tenophora. Nidaria and Tenophora, organ label, organ system, label of organization. Now here it is given both organ and organ system level of organization. Organ and organ system level of organization. So what shall I write here? Yes, I will write here platyhelminths, okay? So platy is the correct answer for this one. This one is Nidaria and Tenophora and this one is Porifera. The digestive system in platyhelminths has only a single opening 
to the outside of the body that serve as the mouth and anus. Hence, it is called. So, what type of digestive system we can call it as incomplete? We will call it as incomplete, incomplete alimentary canal. They have a blind sac body plan. It started from dash to caudata. Two openings are present in alimentary canal. So, as calmins, as calmins to caudata, as calmins to caudata. So, what they have? Two openings. Or we can say, as calmins, they have got tube within a tube, bow plan, or body plan. The basic difference between open and closed circulatory system is dash, which are present in closed but absent in open. The basic difference between open and closed circulatory system is dash, which are present in the closed but absent in open. So what is that that is present in the closed but absent in the open? Come on. What is? Yes, you are right. Capillaries, Gayatri. Your answer is correct. Answer is capillaries. Very good. Capillaries which are present in closed. Any plane that passes through the center does not divide them into equal halves, known as asymmetrical. Example of asymmetrical? Yes, poriferans are example of asymmetrical. No doubt about that. When any plane passing through the center, central axis of the body, divide the organism into two identical halves. This is known as when any plane, now this is very important, any, any plane, okay, so this is known as radial symmetry. This type of symmetry is called radial symmetry. Example, cylindrata, tenophora, and adult echinodermata. When the body can be divided into identical left and right halves in only one plane, and this type of symmetry is known as bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry started from platyhelminths up to chordata. Cylindrata and tenophora are diploblastic, whereas uh, started from platyhelminths up to dash are triploblastic. Yes, what shall I write here? Platyhelminths up to dash. Yes, what should be the dash here? Pardon the English. That's not very. Yes, you are right. Chordata. Perfect. So this dash is up to chordata. Yes, you are right. Animals in which the cells are arranged in two embryonic layers, an external ectoderm and an internal endoderm, are called diploblastic animals, example, cylindrata and tenophora. An undifferentiated layer dash is present between the ectoderm and the endoderm. What is present? This is undifferentiated layer. Come on. What is that in between the ectoderm and endoderm? Yes, you are right. Yes, you are right. Mesoglia. Very good. Mesoglia. Very good. Mesoglia. This is a good one. Mesoglia. Dash is the only phylum of animal kingdom which is not having any true germ layer. Neither diploblastic nor triploblastic. Question number 13. No germ layer porifera. No germ layer porifera. The body cavity which is lined by dash is called coelom. Yes, it should be lined by mesoderm. This coelom is lined by mesoderm. Lined by mesoderm. Let us see. Uh, we'll do up to 20 and then we will see some bits. Question number 15. In some animals, the body cavity is not lined by mesoderm. Instead, the dash is present as scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm known as pseudocelome. Pseudocelome. So what is present as scattered pouches? The mesoderm. Here, mesoderm. Okay. Uh, please confirm this. Whether mesoderm is given or coelom is given. Coelom is given here. Coelom is present as scattered pouches between the ectoderm and endoderm. Come on. Confirm. Confirm, guys. Online children. Because only you can answer me. Mesoderm the Anna Vita? Mesoderm? Okay. Mesoderm. So, mesoderm is present as scattered pouches. The animal in which 
the body cavity is absent as the space between ectoderm and endoderm is occupied by known as acelomates. The body cavity is absent <coughs> as the space between ectoderm and endoderm is occupied by dash known as acelomates. Okay. The triploblastic animals in which the body cavity is absent as the space present between ectoderm and endoderm is occupied by. Yes, what should be the answer? Is it mesoglia parenchyma? I think it is parenchyma and triploblastic, it is parenchyma. Yes, occupied by parenchyma, parenchyma, parenchyma cells, parenchyma cells. These are acylomates, okay? These are triploblastic animals, parenchyma. If I don't write triploblastic, then it is not very clear. You can even write mesoglia to get the correct meaning. Okay, now this complete question is this one. Example, platyhelminthes. So, ab ye platyhelminthes, so triploblastic, no need to write triploblastic. You know it is parenchyma. In some animals, the body is externally and internally divided into segments with the serial repetition of at least some organ. For example, in dash, the body shows this pattern called metameric segmentation and the phenomenon is known as metamerism. So, in phylum, Annelida, Annelida, Arthropoda, and Chordata. Annelida, Arthropoda, Chordata. They show metameric segmentation and the phenomenon is known as metamerism. Metamerism. Dash is a rod-like structure derived from dash present on the dorsal side of the body. Notochord. Notochord is a rod-like structure derived from mesoderm. And yes, what shall I write? Dorsal or ventral? Dorsal. Check it. Dorsal side of the body. Dorsal side of the body. Now, if I show the diagram here. So, this is the dorsal nerve cord. And this is supportive uh, notochord. This is the notochord, na? So this can be considered as dorsal side. This is gut, this is gut, and this is the nerve cord, and this is the notochord. So it is, of course, dorsal side of the body is correct, dear children. Like that, we have completed 18 questions, and now I am now taking some bits, random bits I am doing now. <clears throat> random bits we are choosing. I don't have any group name, so otherwise I would have sent in the group all these questions I would have sent. This is only multiple choice and no multiple choice, only fill up. Okay, so this one is non coded Okay. Okay, question number one, identify the asymmetrical animals, asymmetrical animals, one, two, three, four, just concentrate this side, is Pongilla, Ascaris, Aurelia and Salpa, what is, who is asymmetrical, answer is one, very good, question number two, choose incorrect statement about cellular level of organization, cells are arranged as loose cell aggregates, it is found in sponges. Division of labor is absent. Cells are functionally isolated. Now, choose the incorrect statement about cellular level of organization. Yes, what do you think? What, what could be the correct answer? What could be the correct answer here? Yes, actually, see, there is no division of labor. But in uh, animals, in porifera, we can see that some division of labor is present. Some division of labor is present. It is 100% absent. It is not like that. Some division of labor 
is present. Therefore, third is the incorrect statement. And that, that's why the correct answer. Mesoderm is found as scattered pouches between ectoderm and endoderm in Ascaris planaria nearest tenoplana. Come on, good question. Ascaris planaria tenoplana nearest. Answer is one. Whatever question I'm speaking, I want to see the answer of that one only. Question number four. Incomplete gut is found in hookworm, liver fluke, tapeworm, leech. Good question. Hookworm, liver fluke, tapeworm, leech. Incomplete gut. Incomplete gut means only one opening. And your answer is, some people are answering liver fluke and some are answering tapeworm. Okay. And some are answering both. Okay. Your logic is correct. But I am just adding one point here. In tapeworm, it is absent. Elementary canal is not present at all. So there is no complete, no incomplete because they don't have elementary canal. Tapeworm, elementary canal, ledu. Therefore, the correct answer is fasciola, liver flu. Okay. In tapeworm, digestive system is very good. Very good, Priyanka. You are right. Answer is right. Very good. Now, next question is, next question is this one. Let's do two more questions. And I'm, in fact, whether you are getting confidence or not, I am getting confidence that yes, you will be doing good. Triploblastic animals with radial symmetry. Triploblastic animals with radial symmetry. Yes, please. Snail, starfish, sea anemone, earthworm. One, two, three, four. Answer. One, two, three, four. Question number five. Ka answer, DJ. Five. Question number five. Answer. Answer is two. Very good. Starfish. Last question. Non chordates are with close chordates with close circulatory system. Very good. Close circulatory system. Hmm? Yes, it is two. Two means no. Non chordate with close answer is not two. Non chordate with close circulatory system. But a earthworm. It has got blood vessels. It is having a closed circulatory system. In cockroach, it is open. There are sinuses, pericardial sinus, perivisceral sinus, perineural sinus. So there are sinus blood. Of course, they have heart. But I told you now, capillaries is the one thing which is only present in the closed. So it is not the heart presence or absence make closed and open. No, it can be present in both. But capillaries are only present in the closed. And the last question, the following are the metazoans with two embryonic germ layers. Now, this is an easy question. Very, very easy question. The following are the metazoans with only two embryonic germ layers. Only two embryonic germ layers. Answer, yes, the correct answer is one. So, guys, that is all from my side. And I am signing off now. And uh, do well, prepare well. And I am hopeful. And you have to be hopeful. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Take care. And for the offline students, I am now sitting at the first floor or maybe the second floor. I am coming. And for doubts, you can clarify the doubts. I am just coming there. And we will discuss the doubts. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. One hour, Hannah.